Hey guys, and welcome to Zabbix Spotlight. So documentation is one of the guides behind your daily Zabbix tasks and workflows. Therefore, today I have invited the head of the documentation team, Marina Generalova, to tell us a bit about contributing to documentation, writing the documentation, the team itself, and other things related to Zabbix documentation and what she does in her daily Zabbix life and work. Uh, Marina, welcome. Tell us a bit about yourself, please. Hi, and thanks for inviting me here. Uh, so, as you mentioned, I am the head of Zabbix documentation. So, on a daily basis, I coordinate the work of the documentation team, but I also write documentation myself. And I'm also the head of localization project in Zabbix. It's about translating Zabbix into other languages. It's mostly about Zabbix UI and Zabbix documentation translations. Mm -hmm. So, you said translating Zabbix to other languages. So, probably the majority of users use Zabbix UI and, and read the documentation in English. Um, but how many other languages is Zabbix fully translated into? Maybe just approximately name us some. It depends on Zabbix version. If you take Zabbix documentation for 6.0, it is now being translated into 17 languages, which are more or less translated. But if we name the languages that are fully translated, we have it available in Chinese, in French, in uh, Japanese, and I believe Portuguese is also almost fully translated. It's about 80% done, so mm -hmm. that's a keep it up. So that sounds like a large effort. I assume that part of it, the translation specifically and, and localizations, are, is done by the community, right? Actually, most of it is done by the community, or I would say even all of it is done by the community, though some languages are managed by Zabbix partners. Mm -hmm. And yes, we're mostly driven by volunteers who come to us and ask us, hey, we want to translate Zabbix documentation into my native language, what can I do? And then we help them to register and start translating. Mm -hmm. So everyone contributes a little bit and, and then we have the localization available. Well, it's amazing how many people want to translate Zabbix and are ready <laughs> to spend time to do this. Yeah, well, I mean, it's an open source project, right? Um, a lot of our effort is based on the work of enthusiasts and fans. And as we know, based on our summit and events, we have plenty of those all yeah. over the world. So makes sense. Um, so I myself read the documentation quite often, right? Both when preparing presentations um, or just simply doing Zabbix day-to-day -day tasks. And I've seen it grow over time and it's quite large. So from the Zabbix side, how large currently is the documentation team that is taking care of it? The documentation team is now four people, including myself, and that's something new that we just hired two more people this year. Mm -hmm. So two more people this year, and I assume it has, well, it has grown over time and potentially it might grow even more, right? As, as more things get added, probably, probably more people will have to participate. We'll see, but <laughs> not, not excluded, I assume. Um, Okay, so I myself see that it has grown over time, but do you have some statistics by how much, how many new pages, sections, things like that, or just go by the feel? Do you feel the growth that happens? Yeah, I can feel the growth, how the documentation is growing and how the amount of the features we add in the in each release is growing. And I know that 6.0 documentation has 780 pages or so around that number. Mm -hmm. So if you imagine it's something very close to the Lord of Rings trilogy. <laughs> yeah, wow. That's, uh, and currently you say we have four people taking care of that. Yeah. Four people. Oh, okay, that's uh, quite impressive. And then I think we discussed before this here interview that we also have some new sections being added, right? Like dev guides and things like that for, for developing modules, plugins, whatnot. Yeah, it will be a new project in Zabbix 6.4 and hopefully it will keep developing further in the newer versions. And it's mostly done for people looking to extend Zabbix with their own plugins, their own models and their own widgets. So guidelines with examples, things like that. Uh, not just guidelines, but step-by-step uh, -step how to tutorials. Oh. That's very new for us. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds, that sounds great. Good job, guys. Um, I might take a look myself because yeah, I'm not that good of a, say, PHP developer. So that might be a good first step into, you know, you might even get into PHP that way. <laughs> Start with our step-by-step -step guides, create a new widget, for example, and then, then okay, I'm a, I know PHP now. <laughs> I'll continue with my own projects. Um, so, okay, there's that, there are features, um, there are upgrade instructions, install notes, the documentation is huge. 
and the theme is for people, yourself included. So what do you personally maybe find the hardest and the easiest to document? Do you have like your favorites that, okay, this type of page or this type of feature, this will be easy. I'll do it with a smile on my face and it'll be good. And on the other hand, oh, it's this thing. And oh my God, it's going to be so complex. <laughs> Uh, you know, it depends on how familiar you are with that or that aspect of Zabbix, because I guess no one has even knowledge in everything. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but I like the hard tasks, <laughs> like the ones that get, get you to learn something new. Yeah. I think it's my favorite part of it, because you keep learning all the time on this job. Yeah, I think that's probably a large part for the whole team, right? You not only document, you have to learn yes. different aspects of, of the tool. Um, all right, so that's our team. But as you said, community and partners also participate. And let's say I'm a Zabbix fan. I find a bug in documentation or I wish for some feature to be documented more thoroughly and have some ideas um, or maybe I just wish to translate it into my own language. So how can I become a community translator? Do I have to like find your email and, and email you or, or what's, what's the workflow there? So if you want to become a translator, you need to go to translate.zabbix.com and uh, there will be a button to register mm -hmm. and it will take you to the registration form. So you just sign up, fill in the details and... Uh, and then you wait when we process your application. It's processed manually right now. Um, okay, and what is the approval process? Can anyone become essentially a community translator or are there some prerequisites? Essentially, yes, but then uh, if the translations are of some maybe low quality, I don't know, for some reasons, mm -hmm. then your rights can be limited to just submitting translation, okay. but we haven't had that problem before. Oh, so Everyone is just doing good work. <laughs> so I can still submit my ideas, for example, yes. if I say, okay, this maybe sounds better that way or makes sense, but like that way I can submit them and then you review them and that that's still perfectly fine. Yeah. Okay. That sounds, uh, that sounds good. Um, and there are, so like you mentioned a couple of times during this interview, different parts to Zabbix, there's translations. There are those dev guides, there's the documentation. There's also the Zabbix UI, right? The yep. interface itself. Um, can I participate in translating or contributing to all of those or just say documentation or how does that work? Yeah, you can translate any project that's available on the translate.zabbix.com and you just need to learn the main principles. Like we use Markdown for documentation mm -hmm. and then we use a different type of formatting for the UI and we have guides for everything. It's easy to learn, just <laughs> need to be careful with it. Easy to learn. Okay, so that was, that was my next question actually. So should I be worried? How long is it going to take me? Oh, how long is it going to take you? Well, the documentation is huge. <laughs> so if you translate all of it alone, I guess it's going to take a while. Yeah, but, but just learning the basics is probably quite quick, right? Yeah, it's quick and it's really very intuitive. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so about the documentation platform. So I, I guess this is sort of coming from the previous question. So if I'm not familiar with the platform that we use, because we do use a particular platform, right? For localization. For localization, yes. Yeah. So for, for that, if I'm not familiar with the platform, I should still be able to learn it quite quickly, right? Yeah, we have uh, an interactive tutorial and oh, okay. the interface is very modern and easy. So even the tutorial is available yes. for, for newcomers. Um, all right. And okay, what is the workflow if say, I find a bug or something that hasn't been updated in the documentation. Uh, once again, do I submit as a translator or can I, can I create maybe a bug report and you guys will review it or, or something else? I feel like I see a bug is two options basically. If it's some quick fix like a type or you know, incorrect parameter name, you can uh, highlight it and then press control enter or command enter on the Mac mm -hmm. and it will take you to the type report plugin. Ah, all right. That's the fastest way to yeah, do it, but yeah, then yeah. You, you don't get a feedback on that. And so, if you want to track how development is going, then you can create a bug report. So a bug report, and then I can see, then probably we can even have a discussion there, right? About yeah. what, what is, because I've seen that happen before, I think there are. Okay, and, and speaking of, um, how often do you guys like in the team, do you have internal discussions or maybe even conflicts, you know, about how certain things should be documented or named or referred to? Is that a thing that happens or do you guys essentially have a set of things that you have agree, agreed on and you're just, okay, everyone agrees with, with the current sort of... Well, I, I like the spirit of Zabbix. Everything is solved through discussion. <laughs> That's good, right? Yeah. 
and so we always open to hear opinions and then somehow decide what is the best approach. Mm -hmm. And do internally, do other teams sometimes participate in those discussions or is it just documenters? It's documenters and sometimes developers. So developers also do chime in from, from time to time. Yeah. All right, um, what I sometimes encounter from my side as a Zabbix user, uh, it's probably very easy, but from the side of documentation, um, sometimes there are changes that can affect pretty much not, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna say every page in the documentation, but a large set of pages in documentations. Sometimes it can be a small thing. I imagine like some field name changing, right? It can probably propagate across the whole documentation. Do you guys have to deal with that often? How do you deal with that? You know, it's interesting because sometimes it's a very easy job for developers, like some cosmetic field label on the form has been changed. I know you stopped using item key and decided yeah. to name it item ID and just... Yeah. Um, we have in, in 6.4, we have um, SNMP bulk requests changed to combined requests or something like that. So that's just a naming change. Yeah, so, uh, and then uh, in documentation, we have to update all the screenshots and then a lot of pages where it's mentioned so that everything is now up to date. Right, the screenshots, that's also, that must be quite painful. Yeah, yeah you it's have quite to painful, it's true. <clears throat> and what about um, cases, for example, we relatively recently, well, it's been probably over a year at this point, uh, changed the trigger syntax completely. I imagine that must take a whole lot of work to document. Oh yeah, that's one of those tasks that you remember, but I wasn't documenting it, my colleague was. Yeah, but that's, that's like referenced everywhere, right? Pretty much. It's not just the trigger pages, it's in examples, it's in, uh, in a bunch of things. Well, you have to learn it in the first place to document it, to understand what's right. written in there. Yeah. I understand that you guys do a lot of work based on what we've talked about previously, right? Um, and we really, both us internally and the community, really appreciate it because without documentation, where else would we go? Of course, there are trainings, but still, even during trainings, we oftentimes look at documentation to sort of explain how things work. Um, but community translators, the ones that, for example, contribute to, to translating different languages, localizing Zabbix in different languages and so on. Do they get rewarded at some point? Do we acknowledge them? Yeah, we do. We actually have a reward program for community translators who are involved in translating Zabbix documentation for 6.0 right now. Mm -hmm. And based on your translation rates, you can get from small souvenir from Zabbix and then uh, there are bigger prizes, so you can earn a backpack and official translator certificate. Oh, even certificate. And you can even earn a spot at Zabbix Certified Specialist Training. Oh, that sounds, that sounds great. I mean, if you're already contributing to localizing Zabbix, you probably must have learned a lot of features that you're localizing, and then you go to the specialist, you sort of strengthen that knowledge, and then you get not only the translator certificate, but also the specialist certificate. That sounds like quite a deal. Okay, so to sum it up, if I wish to contribute, I find the community sign-up form on the website, right? Yeah, translate.zabbix.com and there are all the links from there. Yeah, translate.zabbix.com, sign up there, uh, probably have to fill in, fill in info like my name, my last name, email, things like that. Um, that gets sent to you, then I have to wait for approval, right? Yeah. I received the approval and then I get access to the translation localization platform, right? Yeah. And from then on, I can start contributing. Yeah. Actually, I can tour the platform even before you are registered, but when you get registered, you get the right to save your translations. Where, uh, how can you tour it beforehand? Um, I think if you just go to the translate.zabbix.com yeah. platform, you, have all, you can see the projects and you can see our contributors and some other information in there, mm -hmm. and you can take the live tour. Oh, that's uh, very nice. So before, before getting your hands dirty, you can yeah. sort of <laughs> take a look and figure out, okay, this is what I'm going to be dealing with. Um, and if that's okay with me, then I sign up and I'm good to go. Okay, guys, so you heard it here first. Contribute. I guess there are still many sort of free spots in different languages that can be filled in, right? Oh, always yeah, we're welcome. always looking for help. <laughs> yes, exactly. So sign up, guys, um, and maybe you'll become a contributor, be a part of Zabbix and help Marina and her team with uh, some suggestions with localizing Zabbix to other languages um, yeah. and becoming an integral part of our community, sort of an extended translation team. 
I would say it's more important not to help Marina and my team, but help <laughs> other users who speak your native language and who will be able to use them. Oh, no, still, we appreciate language. them. Come on. We, we, of we course, we do, yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Marina. Thank you, guys. And um, we'll see you on the documentation page contributing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.